Hi, my name is Joe Jackson. I'm a journalist, author, interviewer, and broadcaster. I also happen to be the co-author with Nancy Griffith of the book Nancy Griffith's Other Voices. And this day last week, Friday, August the 13th, 2021, I posted on Twitter a picture of the cover of that book, along with the following message, which I wrote while still in a state of shock only minutes after hearing that Nancy was dead. In 1998, I was immensely proud when Nancy Griffith asked me to co-write this book. I am deeply saddened to hear that she has died. I hope her soul rests in peace. Seven days later, I'm still receiving responses to that tweet and even more inspiringly comments from people who say they're finding solace of a kind from rereading our book. Also a week ago, by way of celebrating Nancy's life, I uploaded a podcast based on a radio interview I did with her in 2000 about her musical influences. It was recorded after a gig she did in London's Royal Albert Hall. However, in this short podcast, which is part of a series of podcasts I call Singles, because they run approximately five minutes, although this runs a little longer, I want to play the start of an interview we did for the Irish Times in 1993, just before she released her album Other Voices, Other Rooms, which was already, as she says, being bootlegged by the likes of Bono. But let me give you the remarkable background of this interview, which is something I allude to before the interview proper begins. Nancy and I had our chat backstage in Dublin's Olympia Theatre before her gig. And if I'm remembering right, an evening earlier, an excited Bob Dylan had declared as he entered a restaurant in Dublin after a gig he gave, I love the Irish audience. I've changed my flight. I'm staying here another night so I can go see Van Morrison in concert. Or something along those lines. Looking back now, I see how blessed I was to be playing even a peripheral role in all of this as a reporter for the Irish Times. Maybe I should write a book about those days. Either way, the book Nancy and I wrote is out of print, but if you want to read the article, check joejacksoninterviewer.com. Yeah, I'm, I absolutely was deeply impressed by it. I'm very moved by it. I think a lot of the stuff on it's great. Thanks. You know, so no, really, I'm, uh, I don't have to say that before an interview. I just I only got the tape there the day before yesterday, but it's, it's uh, just even on a cassette, and I'm, I hate cassettes. Yeah, so, I hate cassettes. You know? I was really surprised there's been so much um, buzz just among uh, musicians for the right. end that they're bootlegging right. it among cassettes. <laughs> Bono said that's not bootleg of your new album. How did you get that? <laughs> yeah, what is the, is the general response, though, as, as enthusiastic as mine? It's been yeah. great. Yeah. It's been yeah. great. I mean, you know, when when word went out that I was going to do this, that my phone started ringing. Janice Ian was calling, do you remember this song? Do you remember that song? And, right. and it, was, it was so unselfish, too, because it was never any song of hers, you know. It was right. something of right. someone else. Right. But you did end doing one of Janice Ian's. Yes, I did. Yeah. I couldn't do yeah. it. Uh, folk album yeah without, without doing something with Janice Ian. yeah yeah and she wasn't on it though no she was gone all right all right okay well let's start off with just the thing about that let's and to give it the context in the irish times i felt and maybe this is where i can undo the thing about dylan's gig i felt dylan tapped into an irish magic with the audience last night and you on the album tap into the magic of what dylan was to you and Irish musicians uh, at that level. At a core level, is there something there, or is that just a romantic reading of what artists get when they come to Ireland? Oh, I, I think for me as an artist, I, I can't speak for anyone else, of course, but for me as an artist, what I get um, in return from my audience in, 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 in Ireland is incredible. You know, it's the, the amount of love that, go, that comes from them, and the exchange, and the humour, and the inspiration is, is uh, well, it's incomparable. To, you know, there's no, there's nothing like it in the world. Have you have you ever? Would you even bother trying to identify? Ma Yates says you don't analyze magic. So, <laughs> so would you decide not to? Is it a sense of union, of kind of spiritual union, uh, or would you even bother to try analyze it? There's just so much appreciation there. You know, right. there's appreciation of the story. Um, you know, I. I find that in Wales and in Scotland as, a, as well. You know, it's right, a great right. tradition of storytelling Celtic. and involvement and right. free thinking and right. um, uh, free speech. Right, right. Okay. No, because we have a lot of our poets, like Seamus Heaney has suggested, 
that part of the reason we tune into song and music and poetry at those levels is because we were told to shut up for so long. And you and I may have touched on that the last time, but that, that the Irish, our Celtic races just have this, and the Irish in particular maybe, have some kind of psychic need to sing, you know, to just raise their hearts with the angels or whatever, to get up there. So maybe that's a bit romantic, but I mean, I've seen poets define it that way. I think it's true. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you do have that, and you have the Irish aspect in the album is very strong, in the new album. Yeah. Like Philip Donnelly and, and people like that. Philip Donnelly, Pete Cummins. And we called Pete Cummins to come in and work on From Claire to Here. Yeah. He was shocked. He said, Nancy, I don't know anything about folk music. I'm a rock and roll songwriter. I said, but you are the voice. You are that character for right. me. Right. And from Claire to Here. And, you know, I said, your voice, no other voice will work. It has to be your voice. Right, so, right, right. Um, he came in and he was just great, you know. He was right. great at it. He said, yes, you do know a lot about folk music. You went in right, and you sang right. it. You've mentioned the F word directly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We well, knew F word has to be banned from papers. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you set it out as a folk concept from the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. that was my first love. Yeah. And yeah. Um, continues to be where I draw inspiration. And it really came home to me this year of working on the project because I wrote more songs this year than I've ever written before. All right. And the reason being, it has to be, is that these writers inspired me to become a writer to right. begin with. So you reconnected with that. Right. At a, at a seed level. A little spark came back. Right, right. Tim, the last time we did talk about la uh, Late Night Grand Hotel, you, you had said there were two specific comments. The Nashville Tennessean saying, such a sorrow, this the loss of Nancy to country. And the second one was the Guardian comment, go back west. Had they any influence over you? Um, was no. there any sense you'd been, discon you'd, you'd, you'd been disconnected from the roots we've just talked about through... Nah. What some might say. No, there was none of that. No, because I've, I've pretty much always done whatever I wanted to do. I think that's one of the beauties of being a cult artist, that you can do whatever you want to do. And, and, um, and plus, I, you know, uh, I, I've had so many other people have hits with my songs right. in the past couple of years, and I feel real, real confident to, to uh, you know, next album maybe. Maybe another album like Late Night Grand Hotel. Right, right, right. And there was no kind of negative feedback in the end because I know that and Storm were incredibly popular. I mean, like I saw figures of 380,000 in the first week in America. I mean, that almost takes you beyond cult status. I mean, they're pretty solid sales. Yeah. You know? I've been real lucky for the for the F word type of artist to <laughs> 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 have those kind of sales figures without any radio. Yeah, yeah, no, but these are huge factors in terms of success, uh, well, financial material success in the music business. Well, I think the success that I appreciate was the ability for me to say um, this year that I didn't want to do another record for MCA USA. Right. Right. I, want, I wanted to leave MCA after being there for half of my musical career. Okay. Um, I think that those sales figures en enabled me to... to right. Say I really want to go. So who's the new album with them? Electra. Oh, is it? It's MCA here and in, uh, and in Electra, the UK. Amer UK. In America, it's Electra. All oh. oh, right. Do you do you need when you have sales like that and you do have people covering your hits and covering your songs and making hits of them? Do you need financially to work at all? Are you are you an F songwriter who's a millionaire? Well, I, I don't. <laughs> Which I don't is a need huge to, contradiction in terms. I don't need to go out to work. Right. Um, um, I could stay home and, and um, go to the mailbox every day. That yeah. would be my job, go to right. the mailbox. But uh, I, I don't really want to. I don't ever want right. to be on the road full time anymore. Right. But right. Uh, I, I do. I enjoy being out and, and, and hearing new music and interacting with other artists. And you know, when we tour with this album, we're bringing the Hoot Nanny on the road. Right. Guy right. Clark will be with us. Uh, Iris Dement, who I consider the next of me. Right. And uh, uh, Frank Christian, right. so and whoever else wants to come. But what about the money of wealth? Does that affect, is that a kind of contributory factor? I mean, do you ever feel distanced from roots if, if you get too rich? In other way, you hear these questions asked. No, because you know um, the song on the album Tecumseh Valley of Towns Van Zandt. I first heard that song when I was about 16 years old, right. and my middle name is Carolyn. And I come from a family of very modest means. Sure. And uh, I left home when I was 16. And I, I knew when I left that I could never walk back in the door again. And that character, Caroline, 
that for me, I mean, she was my inspiration not to fall, don't mess this up, you know. Right. Um, well, don't lose your original value system. Right, and I still feel, you know, uh, when we recorded to Coombsville Valley, it took Arlo Guthrie and I all day to do it because we kept crying. And right. there's still, you can still hear us crying in there. We, you know, it, he wanders from pitch, I wander from pitch because we just couldn't help. But Why? That, what was the core pain? Um, or, or I think just, it's just the tears for this woman, this great woman who, who, who fell from grace. And... and um, I feel like that. I never remember that I'm financially secure. Right, okay, okay. Yeah, because people always feel that one leads to the other, that it gives to financial leads to emotional, uh, spiritual security. And it does. It's very often the opposite. Yeah. You and know? I, I forget that I have, I have money, and, you know, and, and um, I mean, my accountant will call me occasionally and say, don't you want to buy something? <laughs> Ever thought about getting a new car? You know, I, um, I just, uh, I don't, I'm a very, I guess, free person. I don't, right, I don't, there's right. not much I need. And that's not the motivating factor in your art? No. In creating, or creating music? It never has been. I guess if it had been, I wouldn't have been the, the type of writer that I am and are, you know, uh, the type of artist and performer that I am. Right, right. Hi, Joe Jackson here again. I thank you for listening to this edition of... The Joe Jackson Interviews podcast. Why not subscribe to the podcast on Podbean or YouTube so you can be informed about any future podcasts I make in relation to Nancy or any of the other roughly 1,400 celebs I interviewed. You also, as I said earlier, can read some of my articles at my website, joejacksoninterviewer.com. Thanks again for listening.